To arms, to arms, the king is calling. Today on the channel, we're going to be painting Royalist Musketeer miniatures for the English Civil War. And this is going to be in a speed painting uh, method to try and get them onto the table as quickly as possible. So firstly, what we do is use Crimson Red from System 3. And I like to water it down a little bit, but then just paint that over the miniatures. Uh, it's up to you. You can either go helpful ever and just cover everything or you can be a little bit more careful and try and avoid the areas that you're going to pick out later with lighter colors such as whites and creams um, doesn't really matter it's entirely up to you uh, just do what works for yourself um, as you can see on these I did base coat using gray primer um, it's always worth priming with something whether it's gray or black or white um, entirely, entirely up to you I prefer a gray or a black just because it puts a bit of shadow in um, whereas white you're really just building up from no shadow whatsoever but entirely your choice so next up I use chocolate brown from model color and I use this to go over all of the muskets you can also use it for hats um, at this period not, not much was standardized so some of the footwear could be brown as well as blacks um, it's entirely up to you how regimented you want your miniatures to look also some of them have sort of uh, satchel shoulder bags you could paint some of those in dark brown light brown it's entirely up to you uh, for me I didn't I just did the muskets um, and a couple of their heads or uh, headwear and then I'll do the boots um, and the bags a different color later on but as I said, it's entirely up to personal preference. And when it comes to painting the uniforms themselves, at this point in time, there weren't really standardized colors for the armies, at least definitely at the start of the war. Um, different regiments would have been in different colors. Some royalists and uh, parliamentarians would have been in red. Some would have been in tan. There were whites, greens, yellows. Apparently there was a purple. Um, yeah, most colours were worn, it really just depended on which unit it was, who was funding the unit, whether they were basically just people who had come together wearing whatever they had or whether they were being slightly more equipped by uh, the local gentry. Um, yeah, there was a lot of variation and even within the units there still would have been variation also as stuff wore out on campaign and they made do with what they could get. So there's quite a large array of options for you to really make these miniatures your own. So next up we've got leather brown. Um, so most of the hands on the miniatures look like they are just flesh, although you could paint them with leather brown so they're wearing some sort of glove. Uh, what I've done here is, I'm not sure what they're called, but the musketeers um, carried their gunpowder in these sort of little wooden pots. Uh, for want of a better word. Please, if you know what they're actually called, uh, comment below and let me know. Uh, so I've used leather brown on those, just because it stands out a little bit better than the dark brown. and gives us that little bit of contrast that we want in the center of the miniatures. And then there's also more of those on the backs of the men. So they are a little bit fiddly, so I would say best technique would be to sort of draw your brush across rather than painting directly down and kind of like your dry brushing it works quite nicely so next up we use black, uh, black from game color uh, hats a lot of the hats were black so I've gone in with those footwear um, yeah basically anything else that you fancy painting black go for it uh, some of the miniatures have swords, so you could do their scabbards in black. It really, again, individual choice. For some reason, the footage of the bone white uh, for their satchels didn't come out. Uh, so at this stage, I would have done the satchels in bone white. And then we're using ice white here to do the cuffs and sort of the facing colors of the men. Uh, you can see on some of the miniatures, they have these... Uh, it's kind of a cloth that goes around their neck and onto their shoulders slightly. Uh, so I've done those in white. Again, if you know what they're called, uh, please comment below to let me know.
but yeah, as you can see, uh, the satchels on the back and some of the belt straps I did do with the bone white, and I think they stand out quite nicely. Next up is for the metal work, so the muskets and the uh, musket rests, the tops of those are metal. So I've just used silver from Game Color. Uh, it's, it's a nice color, I think. Although you could, if it was a larger miniature, it would probably be too bright. For the smaller ones, as I've said in previous videos, being slightly brighter, by the time you've put your wash on, that dulls it down and it ends up being a pretty good color which I don't actually highlight uh, at a later stage because of the fact that it's so bright to start with. Um, just putting the wash on brings it down into a, a good level. But yep, just take your time um, with these muskets because they are quite close to the bodies. You don't want to uh, get silver onto the fabric or their flesh at this stage. So nice and gentle. And then we've got flat flesh from Tamiya Color, and that's what I use for all of the skin tones. Um, if you haven't painted their hands with gloves, do it in flesh, or if you've done a few of them. Uh, Tamiya, I think it, it's a good color when it comes out, uh, but it does require a little bit of watering down because it does dry out quite quickly, so definitely want to add a bit of flow improver to it. Yeah, overall, pretty easy. Uh, the faces, the hands, they're easy to get to. There's nothing much really concealed like on some of the pikemen where um, their faces were half obscured. So nice and easy to do. And I've said in other videos, I tend to paint all of the, the mass figures on the sprue just because it gives you something to hold on to. Um, and all of your miniatures is kind of right there. All you've got to do is just flip it over or turn it around slightly. You don't have to keep picking up different things. Um, personal preference, but I would say if you haven't tried it, Definitely give it a try. Uh, I'm definitely a convert to that method. The only drawback is when you clip off at the last second, uh, you then just need to go back in and touch up. But that's not really too arduous. It's kind of like highlighting anyway. So at this stage, what I would do is then give them their wash. And then once the wash is uh, dry, I'd go back with all of the original colors and then highlight using the originals. Um, I don't tend to use different colours for the highlighting, it's just those same ones uh, just on top of the darkened wash. And that brings us full circle back to the finished products. So overall guys, I hope that you've enjoyed the tutorial, uh, taken some tips away, things that you found interesting. Please also like and subscribe. Uh, leave some comments below again for things that you want to see me do next. And until next time, take care and keep gaming.